Johnson's Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Water Repellent Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, Dick Legrand, Elvie Allman, Cliff Arquette, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script is by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. Music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> Fibber and Molly join us in a moment. Whenever women ask our advice on the best care for fine wood floors, we always give the same answer. The best protection we know of for fine wood floors is regular waxing with Johnson's Paste Wax. Yes, Johnson's Paste Wax is the toughest, longest-lasting floor wax we know about. And it takes and holds a polish that really brightens and glorifies any room. Floors protected by this tough, gleaming shield of shining wax don't lose their original beauty, even in homes where children's scuffling feet subject floors to constant wear. On the contrary, as time goes by, with regular wax care, the wood takes on a deeper, richer luster and becomes more beautiful with the years. Any woman who wants to give her wood floors the very best in floor care will wax them regularly with Johnson's Paste Wax. No other wax gives the same lustrous beauty in quite the same way. Wistful Vista's Mayor Latrivia is going to give a party at the country club tonight. And right now, he's busy in his office checking last-minute details with his secretary. You're sure everyone on the list got an invitation, all right, Miss Gimlet? Did you check it carefully? Oh, yes, I mailed them all out last week, Mr. Mayor. All except, well, there's one name here that I'm sure must be a mistake. A mistake? Who's that? I don't even like to mention the name, Mr. Mayor. The man always upsets you so. If you invite a blabbermouth like him, he'll... Uh, look, well... look, look, Miss Gimlet, I know the man you mean. And when you call him a blabbermouth, you're just being kind. <laughs> Thank you. But his wife is a charming woman, and we'll have to send him an invitation. And maybe he can't make it. You should be so lucky. <laughs> And the invitation come by special messenger, Molly. Good old La Trivia. Probably figured a party wouldn't be a party without me. Just couldn't wait to invite me. My, I'm so lucky to know you, dearie. I get invited to more things just on your account. <laughs> well, I happen to be the entertaining type guy that when somebody throws a dull party where they have to invite a lot of jerks, he naturally thinks of me first. <laughs> Very modestly put, dearie. When is the party? Tonight, at the country club. Let me see. It starts at 8 o'clock, and we... Uh-oh. What is it? Oh, my gosh. If that ain't the... Well, the deal's off, kiddo. Forget it. We can't go. What? Why not? Oh. Don't tell me the mayor thought better of it and canceled the invitation on the back of it. <laughs> well, he, he might as well of it. The dad dreaded thing is formal, and that lets me out. You know how I feel about that stuff. Oh, I think that's wonderful, McGee. Huh? Look, I'll wear that new dress from Christmas. Oh. You know the one Dr. Gambler says I'll catch my death of cold in? <laughs> yeah, I know, and you look beautiful in it, but... I'm not going to torture myself in any dead red a tuxedo again. I'm sorry, Tootsie. Let's skip it. Well, you're my lord and master, dearie. A woman's place is just to obey, I guess. Oh, now, gee whiz, cut it out, kiddo. You know I can't stand it. That's all right, dearie. Forget it. Oh. I shouldn't ask you to take me out formal tonight, anyhow. Well. When we've already been out formal twice since the war. <laughs> the first war. <laughs> Well, gee whiz, but it wasn't perhaps I'll the wind. I'll keep busy. I'll go upstairs and wash out oh. some of your socks like a good oh. wife. I'm... Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, you got me. Look, if you want to go to that, if you want to go that bad, I'm sorry I can't take it, though, but I just thought of something. What? I got no tuxedo. <laughs> I loaned it to Mort Toops last month, remember? Well, that's right, you did, but we can run over there and get it. And good old Mort is out of town. <laughs> the dirty rat. <laughs> Well, I'd have took you if I could have, kiddo, but there's the brakes, I guess. Hand me the paper and let's just sit here and I'll hand you your hat, dearie, huh? and you're sweet to take me to the party tonight. What? Mrs. Toops is home and she'll give us the tuxedo. Oh, now, wait, we don't. She won't be there. We can't. Back the car out while I put on my face. Uh, hold it, hold it, hold it, Molly. Come in, come in, come in. Oh, hello, Mr. Old Timer. Hello there, kids. Hi, Johnny. Hi, daughter. <laughs> Where are you going? Out. Yeah, but I'm in no hurry, Old Timer. Sit down. Well, I don't want to hold you up, Johnny. 
Everybody wonders what's been holding you up this long anyhow. The mayor's giving a party tonight, Mr. Oldtimer, and we have to get McGee's tuck. Oh, I love parties, kids. Kind of runs in the family, I guess. Papa was a great party man. Yeah? Yeah. Papa used to be, to his crowd, what Mr. Churchill is to the conservatives. The life of the party. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's cute. But if you'll excuse us, we ought to be going. Oh, he was quite a card, Papa was. I mind the time he took one of them green metal shades off the hanging light over the pool table at the pool room and put it on his head upside down. Well, that must have been killing. Uh, funny part, come later, Johnny. Oh? Papa was a little on the pin-headed side, you see, and the lampshade slipped down over his ears and stuck. Uh-oh. The boys couldn't get it off him, so they finally let him home with the shade sticking up there like a soup bowl on a lamppost. <laughs> My gosh, what did he do, saw it off? No, it looked pretty bad there for a while there, kids. Till Mama got a wonderful idea. Yeah? She gave him a coat of white paint, planted his side pockets with ivy, filled up the lampshade with water, and got him a job in the park as a bird bath. <laughs> <laughs> well, it taught me one thing that I've never forgot, kids. What's that? Never throw trash in a bird bath, daughter. It might be somebody's papa. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Mills in the orchestra and happy time. we walking along here on the sidewalk in Wistful Vista on our way to the dry cleaners, Mrs. Molly McGee? Well, Mrs. Toop said that Mort sent your tuxedo to the cleaners last Thursday and it ought to be ready now. My tux to the... Mort got it all dirty? Well, he had a little accident with it. Yeah? He wore two party, got a bad olive in a martini and fell down a coal hole on his way home. <laughs> That's what he told Mrs. Toop. Oh? Here's the cleaning shop now with Dr. Gamble standing right in front of it. Well, so he is. Hi, Doc. Hello, Doctor. Well, hello, Molly. Hello, short, stout, and revolting. <laughs> what are you doing here, as if I cared? Going to get McGee's tuxedo at the dry cleaners, Doctor. We're attending Mayor Latrivia's party tonight. Not very tactful of you to mention that, Molly. The doctor probably didn't get a bid to it. <laughs> oh, yes, I got an invitation. Huh? But if you're going to be there, goober face, I think I'll tear it up. <laughs> Come on and go, Doctor. I've got a new evening dress I'm anxious to wear. It's a lovely shade of green, sort of, uh, well, the uh, kind of a, uh, well... I wish I could think of something that would describe that particular shade. Oh, I know something, Tootsie. I can show you the exact shade of green it is. You can, McGee? How? Watch Doc's face. Doctor? What do you think of socialized medicine? I... <laughs> Heavenly days, the exact shade. Here, Doctor, look 
in this little mirror. Isn't that a lovely green? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, come on, Molly. We're wasting time. He won't be able to talk for 15 minutes. So long, fishbone. Bye, doctor. <laughs> Hello, folks. Welcome to the Regency Dry Cleaning Company. Had your clothes dry cleaned regently? <laughs> oh, brother. You must have had a contest for the worst possible slogan, bud. <laughs> That's enough to make a body buy a can of energy and rinse out his own overcoat. <laughs> well, personally, madam, I think so myself. But I'm merely the boss's son-in-law. Oh. Uh -huh. And if this is a sample of married life, I'm in favor of long engagements, and what can I do for you? I got a suit here, Buster. Want to pick it up? Yes, sir. The name? Tuxedo. And, uh, what kind of a suit was it, Mr. Tuxedo? That is the suit, Tuxedo. Well, my name is not Tuxedo, madam. That's this man's name here. <laughs> oh, my name is McGee. And where's Mr. Tuxedo? He was here a minute ago. That was my husband. Well, then who's this fellow? I'm him. Oh! <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. For a minute there, I was a bit confused. <laughs> My goodness, sir, that's perfectly all right. Well, thank you, madam. Now then, Mr. Tuxedo. McGee! <laughs> no, sir, my name is Fosdick. <laughs> Granville P. Fosdick. Have one of my cards. Uh -huh. Take any one. That's it. I'll put it back with the rest of them without telling me which one, because they're all alike anyway. <laughs> Please, now, let's stop this nonsense. Look, Mr. Fosdick. Uh, pardon me, sir. The lady's speaking to you. Hmm? Oh, excuse me. What'd you say, Molly? I said I was... I was not speaking to you. <laughs> I was speaking to Mr. Fosdick. Who's he? I think that's me. <laughs> Wait till I look at my cards here. Yes, that's me. <laughs> well, we certainly got that straightened out in a hurry, didn't we? <laughs> now then, sir, you were saying... I wasn't saying anything. That was me. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You go right ahead, Mrs. Fosdick. I am not Mrs. Fosdick. I am Mrs. McGee. This man is my husband. Well, 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 congratulations, sir. I wish you every happiness. Well, thanks, McGee. I'm sure Mrs. Fosdick... <laughs> now, look, bud. All I come in for was to pick up my tuxedo. The name is McGee. Fibber McGee. Is that clear? Certainly, sir. Whoa! Oh, I just remembered. You're Mr. McGee of 79 Wistful Vista? The same. Well, we made a slight error in our deliveries today, madam. Oh? We held uh, Mr. Harlow Wilcox's dinner jacket here and sent Mr. McGee's to Mr. Wilcox's home. Now, if you'll come in again tomorrow... I can't come in for it tomorrow. I'm wearing it tonight. Come on, Molly. Very well. We'll go over to Mr. Wilcox's and get it. Good day, sir. Yeah. Well, good day, folks. Come in again. Oh. Fosdick. Fosdick. Familiar name. I wonder if I know them from someplace. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. Look. Well, is... well, well, this is a nice surprise. Come on in, folks. Make yourselves at home. Well, Gee whiz, this is a pleasure. Thanks. For 15 years, I've been coming over to your house, and now you drop in on me. Sit down, folks, sit down. We can't stay but a minute, Mr. Wilcox. Oh, we come over for, Junior, what's that? Oh, who cares what you came over for? The main thing is that you're here. Have a chair, Molly. Take that one there, the one that glitters. Good heavens, Mr. Wilcox, they all glitter. I never saw such shining, clean-looking furniture oh, in my... Oh, my gosh. The first crack out of the box, she has to give the guy an opening to drive... Well, it. you know how it is, Molly. I'm a Johnson Wax salesman, so I try everything out myself. Yeah. Look at this room. Yeah. Look at that piano. Yeah. The windowsill. Yeah. The floors. The radio cabinet. My golf bag. You know what makes them shine like that? No. Johnson's Paste Wax. <laughs> you know, I had begun to suspect it was something like that. Johnson's Paste Wax, the finest protection that money can buy that gives fine floors and woodwork a lasting, brilliant coat of protective wax. Yeah, Junior, we know, but they told us that the dry cleaner... Drier and cleaner, oh. you bet. <laughs> Why, with Johnson's Paste Wax on your treasured possessions, dampness can't get through the wax protection. And you keep things clean easier and longer than ever before. Yes, sir, I hey, tell you... Hey, 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 look, Waxy. Yes, pal. 
Oh, by the way, the dry cleaners brought your dinner jacket over here by mistake. Yes. Oh, that's what we came over for, Mr. Wilcox. Well, let me have it, Junior. It isn't here, pal. What? What's that? I was going past your house a little while ago, and I took it in and hung it in the closet. What closet? That one in the hall. Brother, what a booby trap. <laughs> I barely escaped with my life. Your dinner coat is hanging in there, pal. Oh, my gosh. Well, thanks, Junior. Come on, Molly. All right. Coming to Mayor Latrivia's party tonight, Mr. Wilcox? Party? Yeah. Oh. Oh, sure. I'll say I am, kids. I wouldn't miss it. I'll see you there. All right. So long now. So long, Hilo. Hello, operator. Give me Mayor Latrivia's office, please. Yeah. Hello, Latrivia. Harlow Wilcox. Hiya, pal. Yeah, yeah, great, great. Yeah, she's fine. Hey, uh, what are you doing tonight, kid? You what? Why, sure, we'd love to. What time, pal? Okay, at the country club. Mighty nice of you to invite us. My gosh, what a chase. Here we go all over town looking for my tuxedo, which I don't want to find it on account of I hate to dress up, and when I think I finally got out of it, then boom. Here, here it is right at home where there's Ole on the front porch. Who? Oh, Ole from the Elks Club. Yeah. Hello, Ole. Hi, Ole. You waiting for us? Hello, McGee. Hello, Mrs. Sure, I got message for you, McGee. Well? Message from whom? Uh, uh, just give me a minute. That seemed to slip my brain now. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> message for McGee. Message for McGee. Well, just go on talking. Maybe something remind me of it. Oh, well, very well. Uh, how are the wife and children, Ole? Oh, you're fine, thanks, missus. My missus is laid up with sore back. Abner Bago, I think the doctor says it was. <laughs> no, not Abner Bago, Ole. That's Lumbago. Well, Lomer Abner, she make big fuss about the Bago, huh? <laughs> then Christina, my oldest daughter, she gets pinched lift shopping. Heavenly days, how terrible. Arrested for shoplifting. Oh, hey. no, missus, not arrested. You're spinched in revolving door at shoe repair place. <laughs> she was shopping for new lifts for high heel shoes. Oh, I see. Lift shopping. Well, that's better because I wouldn't... Because well, the littlest kid, Loris, he gets fingers run over on the railroad tracks. Run over? Railroad tracks. Oh, used to a little toy electric railroad he gets for Christmas. Oh. He was playing with the train and cracking walnuts. And he hits fingers with a hammer and he gets mad. So he's going to punish fingers for hurting, so he lets the train run over him. <laughs> he's only six years of old. Maybe when he gets seven, he get better sense of it. Thanks, so. <laughs> he talks after my missus' side of the family. His brains is mostly used to good looks. Hey, now I know what that message was, too. What was it, Ollie? Good looks remind me of it. Mr. Wilcox. He wants me to tell McGee he leave dinner jacket in the hall closet. Oh. So long, McGee. Oh. Goodbye, Ollie. King's Men and Meredith Wilson's Iowa Indian Song. The sun will shine, the rain will fall, and Iowa corn will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. Be high by the 4th of July in Iowa.
orchard dressed yet, McGee? Mm -hmm. Hurry, dearie, we're late already. No, we're not late enough for me, kiddo. Help me get this vest buttoned. All right. My, you, you look just lovely. Yeah, well, I don't feel lovely. I feel miserable. This dad ratted collar keeps peeling my Adam's apple. My chest itches, and I can't scratch it through this hard shirt. And the guy that invented clothes like this could have strangled himself tying his bow tie. He should have. My gosh, don't everybody? Now, now, you'll have a wonderful time tonight, yeah. dearie. Hand me that bow tie. I'll tie it for you. I'm not going to wear a bow tie. It's too uncomfortable. I'm going to wear my green knit. <laughs> that way, when you look around the dance floor, you'll know which one your husband is, and you won't Hand have to... Hand me the bow tie. And hold still. Mm -hmm. I'll know which man is mine, all right, because I'm not going to turn loose of your arm all evening. Ha-ha, <laughs> you're too cute. <laughs> you're just saying that. Aren't you? No, sir. When we walk into that country club, I'll be the proudest woman in the place because... Oh, my, I just love this country club, McGee. Isn't this a beautiful lobby? My collar's too tight. <laughs> That's a little better, but gee... Come on, now. The ballroom is down this way. I'm dying for a dance, dearie. <laughs> My gosh, quite a mob in here. Yes. Aren't the decorations beautiful? Yeah. Although I wish they'd turn on a few more lights in here. I can hardly see. Yeah, well, that's supposed to be cozy, kiddo. All these joints are lighted like they were designed for a family of moles. <laughs> Maybe I can unbutton this collar till my eyes get used to the dark because nobody can oh, see hello, me. Oh, Molly. I'm glad to see you. Hi, McGee. Oh, hello, Mr. Mayor. We're happy to be here, aren't we, McGee? One of us is. What's the idea of this party, anyhow, Latriv? And why did you have to go well, and... Well, it's just a little get-together in honor of some visiting officials, McGee. Governor Argebright and his party. Oh, yeah? Who's paying for this shindig, boy? The taxpayers? Oh, McGee! I am paying for it. Oh? As a matter of fact, the city council did discuss the matter of making this an official affair at the last meeting. But the members felt they were on pretty thin ice, so they dropped it. Did it break through? <laughs> I beg your pardon? The ice. Did the council members break through, or wasn't it as thin as they thought it was? Because thin ice is dangerous uh, enough to be... Just, just, just a moment, McGee. <laughs> I don't think you quite understood my remark. I merely Where said... Where do they hold them council meetings anyhow, Latrive? Out of Dugan's Lake? <laughs> There's no ice at the city hall. No, 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 no. Of course not. Of course not. When I said they were on thin ice, I was... Yeah, yeah, it seems a strange place to hold a meeting of our city fathers. <laughs> Out on a frozen lake. Huh. City fathers. Ta-ta. <laughs> Half of them guys ain't even married. <laughs> Besides, if they go skating when they're supposed to be running the city government, it's no wonder they fall down on the job all the time. Uh, now, wait, wait, the... wait, just a minute, please. Look, I merely said the city council had discussed having a party for the governor. At Dugan's they... Lake. Yes, yes. Uh, no, no, no. Not at Dugan's Lake. Oh. The party was at City Hall. I mean, the council meeting was at City Hall. How could them guys get out on thin ice at the city hall? That's ridiculous. There's no ice around the I city hall. I know, I know, McGee. I know what he means. Thank heaven. Why, of course, Mr. Mayor. You simply got the council members together and held your meeting on the little fish pond outside your window. Oh! That sure. ice is as thin as any oh. ice. I no, can... no, we did not fish the icing council on the meat pond. <laughs> Fishing is on the mouse keating. Huh? Council greeting. <laughs> meeting! When I said the mouse timbers were on skin spice, <laughs> a twin spice, you said... on twice! <laughs> Look! Didn't you ever hear the expression, aiding on thin skice? <laughs> I didn't say that they, you, you were the one who said Why did I was We always get into one of and I tried it and it was not a matter of but it should have McGee Yes, boy. 
Are you just trying to show off or something? Hmm? What's the big idea showing up here in a dinner jacket? What? What do you mean, what's the big idea? It says right on your invitation it's formal. Where is that invitation, Molly? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, here it is. Look at there, Latrib. What does it say right at the bottom there? That looks pretty plain to me. It says, come informal. It? <laughs> is that what it says? My gosh. I thought it said come informal. Oh, no. Oh, help me get this tie off, Molly. Hold my coat, Latrib. Come on, Molly. Let's get it. Molly return in a moment. Fine floors deserve fine care, and the finest care you can give a hardwood floor is to polish it regularly with Johnson's Paste Wax, which puts a gleaming shield of tough, long-lasting wax over the floor itself, protects it from wear, makes it far easier to clean, and gives it the deep, lustrous beauty that only fine wax can give to fine wood. And remember, there's a really easy way to polish waxed floors. Ask your dealer about the Johnson Beauty Floor Electric Polisher. It's wonderful to use. The big whirling brush does all the buffing, while you merely walk along and guide, just like vacuuming a rug. You can buy this polisher at low cost or rent one by the day if you prefer. Get Johnson's Paste Wax at your dealer's tomorrow and ask him about Johnson's Beauty Floor Electric Polisher. <laughs> That was a nice party, dearie. Thank you for taking me. Oh, shucks, kid. Glad to do it at the trivia's expense. Have a good time? Just grand. Very handsome country club. Nice clubhouse. Just grand. They serve an awful good dinner out there, too. Just grand. Matter of fact, I'd kind of like to join that country club. You know what? What does a membership cost? Just a grand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Water Repellent Glow Coat, Racine, Wisconsin, and Brantford, Canada, bring you Fibber McGee and Molly each week at this time. Be with us again next Tuesday night, won't you? Here's the sensational new laundry finish that makes ordinary starching old-fashioned. Here's Brisk, B-R-I-S-K, made by the makers of Johnson's Wax. Brisk is not just a starch, but a miracle starching mix that contains a marvelous new ingredient, fabric wax. It's better than starch in four wonderful ways. It restores the body and texture clothes had when new, gives that crisp look without that scratchy feel, keeps clothes 8 o'clock fresh all day long, cuts 15 minutes from every ironing hour on brisk finished garments. Easy to use, no cooking, no boiling. Tomorrow, get brisk, B-R-I-S-K, at your dealers. It's the only laundry finish that contains Miracle Fabric Wax. A story of crime in Big Town is next on NBC. WMAQ and WMAQ-FM, NBC in Chicago.